Running shoes versus training shoes. Should you run in your training shoes? Should you lift in your running shoes? Not necessarily, and to give you a better idea and explain why, I cut both of my pairs in half to show you why it's suboptimal to run in your training shoes and lift in your running shoes. All right, so let's start with lifting. Should you lift in your running shoes? Should you only use your training shoes for lifting? So when we look at the internal construction of a running shoe and a training shoe, it's pretty easy to see why you'll want to preserve your lifting in your training shoes versus using a running shoe. Now, when talking about lifting in footwear, we wanna consider something called stability. Now, stability with footwear comes in two different forms. You have this physical stability of the density of the midsole. So when you look at this drop set trainer two's midsole, it has a lower stack height. So stack height is essentially the amount of material that separates your foot from the floor. So this shoe is getting you close to the ground and it is slightly denser regarding its foam midsole. This is going to give you a more stable feel. When you look at the Adi Zero Boston 12 over here, it has a high stack height. So there's a lot of foam here separating the foot from the floor and you have some gaps here in construction and it's gonna be more compressive because this foam is more plush and responsive. Now on top of that, stability can also come in the second form which is the proprioceptive element of stability. So this is essentially how our foot feels the ground with the footwear that we are wearing, which then reciprocates up the chain of the body to create stability at different joints. So if our foot feels the ground a little bit more, you're generally gonna have more proprioception with that floor in the foot, which is then gonna translate to better stability up the chain. And so now when we look at these two shoes, let's say we are squatting. With this running shoe, you have a bevel heel, which means the heel curls up. You also have a lot of toe spring, and this is for running purposes, but that's gonna then take your toe further from the ground. So if you were to squat with a shoe, your balance is gonna be thrown off just because you don't have the flattest surface to lift on. You have a ton of foam here separating your foot from the floor, which is gonna compress. And then you might also lose your balance forward with all this toe spring. When you look at a training shoe, it's gonna be a lot flatter. So there's a lot less toe spring in this shoe. And with its denser midsole, you're gonna feel the ground more. So in the context of lifting, if you are doing any form of loaded strength work, it is generally a good idea to opt for a cross training shoe over a running shoe. Now you can also train barefoot and with barefoot shoes if you're looking for additional stability and basically no stack height. But if you're considering training shoes and running shoes for lifting purposes, always tend to err on the side of training shoes if you plan to use barbells, heavier dumbbells, machines and whatnot, because with running shoes, they're gonna be suboptimal and you can do some lightweight work in them. You can do some body weight work but in the context of stability, this is just not gonna be your best bet. All right, so now let's talk about cross training and versatile training because this is where I think it gets a lot more nuanced. Now, if we're talking about cross training that involves like plyometrics or even any form of functional fitness where you're doing burpees and any form of exercise that's gonna put abrasion on the upper of your shoe, you'll typically want to opt for a training shoe. They're gonna be a little bit more rigid, a little bit more built out to be more durable. With a running shoe, you typically have very lightweight upper constructions and lightweight foam and outside materials which can break down a little bit faster however let's say you're at the track doing a cross training workout and you're also doing some short interval runs and you're doing this more versatile or athletic style training session in that context if you're not going crazy heavy then a running shoe can suffice and it will be fine but for my folks who are taking classes if you're doing any form of loaded strength work in that class or if you're doing hit and you want a little bit more ground feel and a little bit more density with your shoe a traditional cross training shoe or training shoe will typically be a better bet in that realm so when considering cross training in in your running shoes and training shoes, consider the demands of that cross training session. If it is a session that's gonna have abrasion on the upper of the shoe, or if it's a session where you have like broad jumps or any form of plyometric that's a little bit more demanding and you want more ground feel and a little bit more density with your midsole, then a training shoe will be your better bet. If you're doing a cross training session and it's like a hit workout where you're doing a lot of jumping, a lot of body weight work, and even some short interval runs, a running shoe can suffice. And in that context, a training shoe might actually feel uncomfortable because for example, with this drop shot trainer, Two's high density EVA foam heel back here, it can actually be pretty uncomfortable for running. So when considering your shoe for cross training, consider the main asks of that workout. If the main asks are a lot of body weight, jumping and running focused asks, go for a running shoe. You can also wear a training shoe in that context. It just may not be the most comfortable. And then conversely, if that cross training session has more abrasion focused exercises or anything where you do want a bit more density with your midsole or you plan to lift on top of jump, that is where a training shoe can be really useful. All right, so last Lastly, let's talk about running. So 
it's gonna be pretty easy to decide which shoe to go with, but generally speaking, if you're running, especially one mile or more, a running shoe will be your best bet. Now, obviously for my barefoot shoe runners out there, you're a full different breed and we're not talking about you in this video, we're just comparing training shoes and running shoes. But if you're running once again, more than a mile, generally a running shoe will be your best bet. Now, let's say you have a workout and you wanna tack on one or two miles pre or post workout and you don't feel like rotating shoes. Can a training shoe suffice? Yes, and that is where we want to consider the spectrum of cross-training shoes. Some cross-training shoes will be a little bit more plush and runnable than others. With the Dropset Trainer 2 here, it's one of my favorite shoes for lifting, and that's because the density of the midsole and we also have a very flat sole construction. And so with this heel back here, it's actually a big knock on this shoe for running. So with this model, I will typically only sprint or do like 400 meter bouts in this shoe where I know I'm gonna be a lot more forefoot dominant because if I do a longer run and I'm a bit more midfoot or heel dominant with my strike, this is where the shoe can fall short. And instead I would rather opt for something like a Reebok Nano X3 and OnCloud X3, basically any training shoe that's a little bit more plush and runnable for that ask. So when it comes to running, if you are planning to do a lot of mileage on a weekly basis, generally a running shoe will be a better bet. Also with its more plush and responsive midsole, it's typically going to beat you up a little bit less. So when we talk about durability of running and really acclimating to more volume every single week, that would be something to heavily consider. Now, if you have to run a little bit in your training shoes, it's generally not the biggest deal, but you're gonna wanna be very conscious of your foot strike and usually keep a more forefoot or midfoot strike to prevent having any form of heel of a really dense cross training shoe optimized for lifting, causing any discomfort while running. All right, so let's take a closer look at the internal construction of this training shoe and this running shoe. So I have the Drop Set Trainer 2 up here and the Addy Zero Boston 12. So in the Addy Zero Boston 12, you can see that we have this dual layer of foam here and it's pretty dang thick. And so if I were to just press down on this foam, it's pretty compressive and that's what gives this shoe its nice poppy feel and its nice lightweight nature because this foam is not as dense as the training shoe up here. Also with this model, you have these rods that go throughout the midfoot of the shoe. It's one of these features in the Addy Zero Boston 12 to help give it a little bit more propulsion. And so for running, that's awesome because you're gonna be going forward when wearing the shoe primarily for your activity, AKA running. For training, that can be kind of problematic because that's gonna hinder the overall balance of the shoe. You also have some beveling of the heel, which means that the heel is curled up. This is to make for a smoother transition of your foot strike. And you also have some toe spring. So that's essentially this lip of the toe. And that's to also help with that forward propulsion of running. Also with this model, you have a lightweight upper construction. This is gonna hinder this shoe's overall durability for cross training purposes when you have abrasion on the top of the shoe, hence why the upper of most running shoes are not really built out for things like CrossFit and tough cross training sessions. On top of this, you also have an outsole that has exposed foam. So here through the midfoot and then back through the midport of the heel, you have exposed foam and this is to save on weight. For running, this can be great. However, for cross training, this can hinder this shoe's long-term durability and overall grip on different surfaces. And now, while this isn't gonna necessarily lead to a ton of slip right away, if you are doing a form of lateral movement, I think this can break down a little bit faster if you're outdoors and whatnot. So just something to consider there. This helps save on weight for this running shoe, but it can be problematic for lifting and cross training. Looking at the Drop Set Trainer 2, you have two different types of foam that go throughout the shoe. Up here in the forefoot, you have a more responsive and flexible material, but it has a lower stack height. So it gives you a nice stability despite being a little bit more plush than the foam back here in the heel. In the heel of the shoe, it's a lot more dense and stable. So if you are to put a little bit of weight in your heel when you are squatting, for example, this will typically give you a nice degree of stability versus the beveled heel of this running shoe that's a lot more plush. You also have this cutout here in the midfoot. Now this is for ventilation and it's a TPU layer. This is proprietary to the Drop Set Trainer too. So kind of ignore this because the main takeaway here is more so the density of the sole and the stack height versus this kind of niche feature here for ventilation. Also with the Drop Set Trainer too, you have an upper construction that's a little bit more rigid with additional overlays and synthetic overlays around the forefoot here. So around the toe box, you have additional layers to help give you additional durability. This helps give you more structure and the boot of the shoe also has a bit more material to help lock down that heel when you're lifting and cross training. And so all that said, when you look at these two shoes, it's pretty easy to see why one would be better for running and lifting. So when you are kind of on the fence, try to remember that with your shoes, little things like this can add up 
as you get more specific and serious with your training. All right, y'all, hopefully this video helps shed some light as to when you should reach for a training shoe and when you should reach for a running shoe. Also, I hope the construction breakdown helped you kind of get a better idea of what's actually going on inside your training shoe and your running shoe. If you have additional questions on this video, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally, especially if you need help deciding on what shoe you should get, especially in the context of cross training shoes for your workout needs. Let me know in the comments below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always, drop a like on the video, drop a subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.